but I'd explain what the hell I was doing in the last video. Let's just have a coffee. Uh, I've had drunk too much last night. I'm just too too with a load of garlic in it as well, so. Mm. So I'm not to feel too hot this morning is an understatement. Uh, <laughs> All this is is an iPad 3 on a uh, on a Behringer dock. For some small italic asks me why I don't upgrade. If you uh, if you'd like to pay me to, the money to upgrade, I'd quite quite happily upgrade. Um, so yeah, what I was doing last week, um, TF7, which is a um, it's a really good um, FM synth, six op FM. Um, I think it's free initially, but if you want all oh, the actually to unlock new functionality in it, you have to buy buy the add-ons. But um, so if we go into here, if it's gone to sleep, yeah, you got um, it's got absolutely ton, tons and tons and tons of different FM algorithms to work with. That's like basic additive synth. That it's just adding adding carriers together. But you've got all different modulation options then. So if you're into your FM, it's absolutely wicked. I think it was AUG 2 for the sound I was using. Which is, uh, it wasn't 2, it's 3. Which is just like uh, straight through uh, two, two modulators feeding into a carrier. Straight up. And I was using sawtooths. So unlike an original DX7, you've got the you know like something like a more modern uh, FM synth like the uh, Casio VZ that I used to have years ago, or you know an um, FM8 VST, you can use um, different waveforms, so you're not just stuck with sine. So even a simple algorithm only using two carriers, uh, two modulators, whatever, you can get quite complicated sounds. The full effects section on it as well, and it's got a low pass filter. Which not all FM synths have. Obviously, the only thing is that the low pass filter doesn't have a uh, an envelope on it. But you've got a mod matrix to dip the dean at your end. And the sound I was using was kind of basically uh, this. So I've made quite a metallic sound. I've turned the feedback up a bit, which is the feedback to, between oscillators. Which, if you know anything about FM, that increases. Distortion, noise. Put a bit of noise in there. And uh, what I'd actually done while on the train to work last week is I'd put that into a uh, sequencer on here. It's just sequence three notes and then I'd uh, played it some uh, effects on it. The effects it was running through were actually guitar effects through the gold guitar over there because I'm quite into using the uh, Traditional instruments for making sound effects and stuff as well. I'm not just into synth. So, um, we have the uh, sound effects. Can't remember where I am. Effects. I've rearranged everything this week. Uh, tone stack. But um, in the video, what I've done is I'd actually bunk banged everything out to Ableton. And then um, uh, Ableton was sequencing the notes and it was coming back out through the audio interface back into the iPad in an effects loop. And basically, uh, what I'm playing with was a, a, um, an Echo X tape delay. Predominantly, I think I've I switched the amp off on it. Uh, it's got an old old guitar style reverb on the output of the chain but yeah I was just playing with the uh, regen and dirt on a uh, Echo Rex and then uh, to get the sweep I got a really dirty horrible nasty guitar flanger because uh, um, you can do these things you know your studio effects and your DAW but the um, thing with guitar effects is they're all they're just nasty they're dirty and horrible um, so the thing with them is if you're using them with synths is don't use big fat synths because the, these things are designed for making thin, you know, thin guitars sound fat. So you put a thin sound through them, not a fat sound. If you put a fat sound through it, it'll sound absolute shit. Um, so all of that's now off into Ableton and being um, 
you know, at some point it'll get turned into a, a track. But um, what I'm playing with at the minute, I'll just show you different ways of working that you can do just with a bloody iPad. Um, let's just wait for this one to load up. There we go. So this is a, a sampling um, drum sequencer, which is really good because um, it takes you away from the left to right paradigm as well. So it um, makes you do things in interesting ways. You're limited to eight to eight tracks on it as well, which I find quite interesting because um, my old way of making hard ass was all about you know chucking everything in there, including the kitchen sink. So um, um, this, this is quite interesting how this limits you actually. So, um, yeah, so basically, say on the kick channel, we've got a, a, a kick drum loaded in here. There we go. So, you can play around with the waveform slightly, or actually, in here, you've got usual sort of things attack, hold, decay, tune in. It's got a filter on it. All of these things you can automate per hit as well. So you can change, you, you know, you filter on each each hit or um, decay on the sound. Simple effects section on the mix. You just got a uh, a decay, a, a delay, and a reverb, and a distortion and the EQ on that on the master. And you can feed the delay into the reverb as well. So it's really simple, but um, you can do quite quite interesting things with it. So um, yeah, all this one is. Let's just mute all these parts kitchen sink you see I've got eight parts so I've got to use them um, so you've got a kick now you think oh you've only got eight tracks man but I mean for instance that kick um, is actually two kicks because the, um, I mixed the two kicks together in here in the mixer then bounce them out to uh, you just export out same as we used to do in the old days of Cubase when we've got no processing power to run MIDI um, and then um, bounced it out into audio share, uh, cropped it, and then brought it back in on one channel. So we got a kick in there, and then we added uh, it's kind of 125 BPM techno. This uh, two open hats together. Oh, it's so innovative. Uh, snare drum. Not on that one. That one. Okay, instantly on that one. You can hear on that. So it's got some reverb on it. Oh, it's just a cheap, nasty reverb in the drum machine. The snare itself is. Uh, la, 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 la. It's just got an extreme uh, bandpass filter on it to make it sound like that. Uh, it's got the resonance peeking through and then going through the reverb. So you can use this as a filter, you can use it as an extreme EQ, do whatever you want with it, can't you, mate? And obviously tune the bloody things right, for God's sake. Otherwise it sounds shit. Uh, what else we got? Running hat. Obviously things like running hats. So low is it, that one? You see, with something like this, I, I, I don't use loops anyway. I never have done. But, um, if I, I don't, you know, you loops, you, you've got, yeah, 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 it's not, you just put, insist on programming all your own stuff and you don't use loops and you're still using samples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come, come on, you lazy ass. If you use, the trouble is, if you're lo using loops, um, you've got no control. Um, I have um, some some clients that use loops quite. I I'm, I'm, I've got nothing against them, but if you're using loops, um, you're instantly like stuck into what somebody else is throwing together. So if he's decided that this snare has got this reverb on it, if you're insisting on using the loop, you're stuck with using the loop. I mean, there's things you can do with it, but you kind of you're stuffed. I, you know, you can use um, you can use um, frequency splitting and things to get control of bands, but you can't. You haven't got the fine control you've got. 
and stuff and some doing it properly. Uh, you see all that? If I want to change the groove, I can change the swing on it, and also the, oh, that's the velocity level is all there, so that's giving it the groove. I'm not stuck in somebody else's idea. So, hats. And then I'll just put all these three in. I'm using um, kind of low pitch toms on this together to um, give the impression of a bass line, even though there's no bass line, but they're low. It's fairly sort of done thing that. Well, that's all you can do. You've run out of tracks. Yeah, well. Bounce it out. So I mean, that, but this has all been bounced out. Uh, discard it. Bounce it all out. And if you bounce it all out as well, well I, I like to. Uh, it's probably got some distortion on the output a little bit. Here we go. Bring it back in. So that's, it's like using the old reel to reel, isn't it? Oh, that's on the chat, chat one there. So to hit it twice and it's a full loop. It does insist on playing the whole loop. Okay. You, See, then you can start adding stuff on top, can't you? You thought, oh, well, you're stuck with this. Yeah, well, I've still got the original, and when it comes to bouncing it all down, I'll just go back to the original, bounce all the individual tracks out to Dropbox into Ableton, and then I've got loops that I've made, not somebody else, to just um, quickly lay out in Ableton. So then we've got uh, some, some more percussion sounds that have been laid on top. I, I won't do them all separate, otherwise this video is going to last forever. Uh, let's just mute out that one. Okay, and then one more thing that's been added. The reason I've come down here this morning, I've got an idea and made a two, two more, two, only two more things to add. Maybe. Um, so yeah, last thing I was doing last night, I'd, uh, that TF7 again. Uh, it was the same sound actually that I'd used in the other thing I was doing. I basically sampled that out, again into Audio Share, and just taken one hit, brought it in here. Because you don't just have to do drums in this with being able to pitch things. Things it's like working with the old NPCs, isn't it? You know how they used to make hip hop. So it's it's a drum pattern, isn't it? Well, it's not because these are all these have all been pitched on uh, pitch automation, course tuning lot. So you can see there's some automation on that. And uh, there's some filter filtering going on as well. And this thing does have a uh, pattern sequencer in it as well, so I mean, I've got some different uh, patterns as well with the different things going on. So we can then um, bang all of these out into Ableton and we've got a, got a track on our hands then. There's two more synths I want to add to it, but um, 